Yeah, niggas ain't gonna know nothing about this one, but I bet the ladies will. I'm just gonna tell you, you better grab your thick female and get on the floor right now. Here we go. Yeah, I like the way you do what you do. Go on, drop it like it's hot, baby. Do what you do. Go on, shake it, 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 shake now, last time we had, let's see, the previous shows, we had Yogi Ward and his daughter, Lauren Ward, on here. And then we had a poet, uh, Melinda White. We're just keeping up, and more and more people are joining us. Today, we're going to talk about weight loss. I've lost a lot of weight in the last, um, I'd say, mm, six or seven months. I've been walking a lot, and I've been reading a lot reading different people's ideas on weight loss because it's never one thing that makes you lose weight. It's usually a combination of things. I've also ran into a, a writer, Randy Levine, and she has this book. It's called Love More, Eat Less. Um, she said a lot of people didn't like it because of the cover. Well, you know, that's just the way it is, you know. We're talking about weight loss. And then she said, um, it's not nothing that you can do quickly. It's something that takes a while to do. And she also has another book. I didn't bring it. But she has a cookbook with some ooh, fantastic um, recipes in it. Now, she's from Colorado. She lives in Denver, Colorado. And she's also on one of my blog talk radio shows. Um, this book helped some people that I care about a lot. And then here's what she said. Dear parents, this book, I wrote this book because I care no other reason. And that's what she's saying. She said years ago she worked with children and the occasional parent helping them overcome obstacles in their path to a more beautiful life. In other words, she worked with a lot of, you know, I think she was a t also a part-time teacher and she worked with a lot of children. And she noticed uh, obesity, you know, in a lot of children. So she gives a little softer touch to it, you know. Raising overweight children does not imply that you are a bad parent, but it does mean that you need to make some better food decisions for your children. Only you can ensure that your children grow up without excess weight and associated diseases afflicting their bodies. As you know, before we talked about diabetes, that's one of the problems, you know, and um, hypertension in adults, you know. So, I mean, that all leads to it. I just noticed that they have, they're trying now to get children to stop eating junk foods. I even noticed my grandchildren when they, they call a snack chips and juice, you know, but I really, the chips don't need to, it should be fruit, you know, and um, distilled water, really, that should be a snack. And popcorn. Popcorn is always better than chips to me. I've always loved popcorn. But chips, I just got to like chips in the last decade. I never was a, a, a chip eater. You know, popcorn, yeah, but not chips. So people have to make a decision as to what they want to eat or not. You know, so also like sugar stuff. You know, if you have this craving for sweet, that usually leads to diabetes too. You know. I don't really have a craving for sweets, but a lot of children do and a lot of adults do, you know. Um, what I was going to say is like years ago when I was young, I was a strict vegetarian. You know, I didn't eat a lot of red meat. Occasionally I might, but not too often. 
I liked fish, but now they talk about the mercury in fish. So I say to myself, well, what can you eat? You know, a lot of times I find myself getting a veggie burger, you know, but sometimes I don't do it, so I end up eating some type of fish. I do eat a lot of chicken, but you know, you can eat chicken every day of the week, and that's just ridiculous. But anyway, that's Randy's book. We'll get back to her book. But my other favorite book is called Down Home Cooking, and it's by Taste of Ron's. It's by Ron Wells. He's a chef in Chicago. He grew up in the South, and then he moved to Chicago when he was young. But he's got some really great recipes in here. Um, and he said the thing that motivated him to cook was his mother. Okay, she was his motivation. He started cooking, I think, when he was like seven years old. He used to stand in the kitchen with his mother and watch her. And then she inspired him. Yeah, because this book is in fact dedicated to his mother. The love of, of her cooking was passed down to me and my sister and brothers from a very early age. Our home was always open to our family and friends with the smells of cakes, baking, biscuits made from scratch, and something uh, delectical in the oven. Now, he's going to be on my next show. Uh, right now, he's working on something that he can actually cook. He's going to do a little video, and you, we're going to show him cooking. But um, I told him really what I wanted to taste was his sweet potato pie. You know, I, even though it's sweet, I, we was going to try it with Splenda, you know, so we won't have to worry about diabetes. But um, this is a very good book. This is one of my books that I like. I really should have brought that other book, but um, I have tried recipes in the other book. I'm going to try some of these, and I'm going to let you know just, you know, if they taste okay. I don't eat pork, but he's got one on pork. He's got a lot of stuff on turkey. A lot of people like turkey, you know, but not me. I mean, yeah, I like it, but not too much of it. Too much of anything is not good. He got turkey burgers. He got uh, baked chicken. You know, he got some of everything in this book. So, you know, it's a good book. And on the front, he, he does pastry good, too. You can see it right there. But now her book, I liked it because it dealt with the problem. I can't really say that I ate any of her cooking, but I did try some of her recipes, and they were good. They were really good. This one talks about the fact that the parent is in charge of the child. And so, therefore, she doesn't necessarily blame the parent for obesity, for the child being obese, but she knows the parent is the one that's guiding the child. So, in other words, if you don't put fruit in front of the child and you put candy in front of the child, of course the child going to want candy. You know, they develop those sweet tooths early in life. So, and she got recipes. Let's see. She lives up in the mountains, so her cookbook is uh, a very good, it's a award-winning cookbook because it's, most of the recipes are for people that are up in the mountain, high altitude, you know, how to cook things. Because I didn't realize it, that when you live high up in, in the mountains somewhere, you know, your cooking time is different, how you bake stuff is different. It's a whole different thing. So... Sometimes I think it's the way we flavor our food. Some of us just decide that everything should have salt on it, which is to me ridiculous, or everything should have sugar on it, or everything should have ketchup on it. You know, there are some people that put ketchup on everything, no matter what it is that they're eating. They got to have ketchup on it. So that's the way some people eat. Of course, that's not right, but, you know... Every culture has its way of, of eating things. So, let's see what... I used this book with some of my relations, and it worked with some of them. They actually lost weight. So, I would recommend this book. And it's called 
love more, feed less. Because the person that I used it with was definitely on their way to being a chub wub. And I started talking to them about the book. And I had her on my uh, blog talk radio show. And the next thing I know, months later, she went down two dress sizes. She went from uh, extra large. She's going to an extra large. She went from extra large to, to wearing size medium. So she kept it off. It's been a year or two now. So I would recommend, you know, Randy said the book wasn't selling that great in, in uh, Denver, Colorado. I said, yeah, well, you should go to the big cities like Chicago, New York, places like that where people have weight problems. Well, really, it's all over and discuss the book. Now, I know people love pizzas, but um, she has a way that that she says with the pizza it provides a great opportunity to teach your kids how to recognize when their body has had enough to eat inform them that once they first begin to feel a slight belly budge against their pants or skirt that that this feeling is their body talking to them and telling them that it has had enough also have your kids drink a glass of water or milk before meals are served both beverages will slightly fill the belly thus decreasing the want for extra servings now that's a good hint you're right when you eating anything especially ice cream i love ice cream but once my stomach start feeling full and my pants start getting tighter i say oh well that's enough of this ice cream you know so it's the same way, ice cream, pizza, you know. And I don't drink pop. I hate pop. Really, I do. I drink uh, the energy drinks or green tea, you know, or uh, decaf coffee, you know. So, and I don't put sugar in it. And I hate sugar in tea. Whew. So, there are a lot of hints uh, as to, you know, with children, that probably would work. That would probably, I don't know about adults. But I know with children. Okay. So, Randy is very good at weight loss. But she says some people just don't want to deal with it. And I agree. Some don't. And some do. But for the ones that want their child to lose weight, you know, you do have to work with them. And you can't be real negative because you know how sensitive children are. So... And they don't like, you know, when you have obesity in the classroom. We used to have a lot of obesity uh, in the classrooms. And, and kids tease each other a lot. And that's not good either. You know, you don't want to be teased. Who wants to be teased, you know, call names and stuff like that. So I think, you know, it's nice to withhold a little bit of the sugar, you know, because you have sugar addicts. Okay. So... These are two of the, my favorite books. Another thing is having them be active. That's the second thing. You have to let them be active. You have to let them uh, move. You know, they're going to move around anyway. So you have to take them for walks. I mean, people walk their pets. Why not walk your kids, you know? So you have to let them uh, do sports if they like basketball. Uh, let them do basketball. Uh, if they like roller skating, ice skating, swimming, you know, let them do that because that really helps. Jumping rope, you know, things like that. Because when gym time comes, some people just hate to go to gym. They just don't like gym for some reason. I don't know what it is about gym. But when gym time comes, they make every excuse why they don't want to put the gym suit on or whatever they have to wear and participate in gym. That's how it starts, you know. You know, um, at least that's what happened to my cousin. Now she died. She was wearing like 400 plus. But when she was a kid, we used. My mother used to make us go to um, acrobat. She used to call it. And so we would all go, and she would go too. But she never wanted to participate. And I knew then that it was going to be problems with her. When it came to the physical activity, she would sit down on the side. You know, she just didn't want to do it. You know, and she wasn't that heavy then. But she just, 
Didn't like physical activity. Didn't like physical exercise. She would walk, but that was about it, you know, the rest of it. And she did die early, too. She died, I think, in her late 30s or early 40s, you know, so. I'm just saying, you got to have some type of activity, you know, some type of physical activity, uh, exercising. It really helps. And walking is one of the things, you know. So many people have treadmills, so. So those are the two things that she says you should do. Tell them when they're eating. If their pants feel tighter than they did when they first started, they should stop. The stomach is telling them something. And pay attention. And the second thing is let them exercise. Also, lower the sugar amount, you know, instead of eating three pieces of candy, just let them Slow it down till they just eat one piece of candy, you know. Because if you see them, they go to the store, for instance, they'll have a Hershey bar, a Kit Kat, and uh, something else that's chocolatey or sweet, you know. And then they'll, on top of that, they'll have a Hun Bun, and then they'll have a bag of potato chips, and they'll have a Pop. I know how they eat. That's what they do, you know. So then when it's time for dinner, you say, are you hungry? No, of course not, because you didn't eat all of that. You know, you, you, you didn't sugar yourself to pieces almost. You know, you're just too much sugar. So you got to, you know, instead of the hum bun, have a piece of fruit, a banana, or an apple, you know. And instead of three pieces of candy, have one piece of candy. You know what I'm saying? You know, you just got to cut back on that stuff. And then, too, when they go, I'm not talking against fast foods, but when they go to McDonald's, they had those hamburgers. You know, I hate hamburgers. I can't eat them. A veggie burger, I go to Burger King and get a veggie burger. I tried to eat a hamburger and I almost died. I just cannot eat a hamburger, you know. I never really could, even as a child. I'd always leave half of it. So some things, you know, just ain't for some people. And that's just the way that is, so. Anyway, cheese and fruit wraps are good, you know, in place of hamburgers and fries, you know. So if you're going to go to McDonald's, I would suggest you get one of those chicken wraps and instead of those uh, Whoppers at Burger King or, you know, those triple sandwich with all that meat in it because it's just not good for you. Anyway, so modeling a better life. You know, making your life better, that helps a lot. And, like I say, you can hear us at Blog Talk Radio. And she's talking about weight loss in this book and some of her recipes. Like, for instance, I said, you know, Thanksgiving is coming up and some people do not know how to cook a turkey. And you say, what? I say, you'd be surprised how many people don't know how to cook a turkey. You know, so I know some things that they say, some people say, okay, here's an idea. Why don't we put it, cook it in a uh, paper bag? And they say, no. Then other people say, no, don't use a paper bag. That's too germy. You shouldn't use a paper bag. And then some people say, okay, we're going to put it in aluminum foil. And then there are people that say, don't put it in aluminum foil. But, you know, I think it's up to that person as to how they want it. You know, if you want to put aluminum foil over it, I don't see anything wrong with it. The patience, is, you just t- it just takes patience, really. It does. And you have to make sure that the turkey is thawed out all the way. You know how some people cook a turkey and they cook, the, cook it with the ends, insides in it because they ain't let it thaw it out. I mean, little stuff like that. You'd be surprised people don't know how to cook turkeys. And all these people with these turkey fryers, I mean, they just, they ought to quit. Oh, I'm going to fry my turkey. Okay, right. And the house with it, you know. So, you'd be surprised how many people do not know how to cook a turkey. Something simple like that. Um, Like with the dressing, you know. Some people don't like onions, so you can't put, see, different members of your family, there are things they can't eat. So if they can't eat the onions, you you know, you cook some of the dressing without the onions. You cook some of the dressing without garlic, if they can't have garlic, you know, 
or if they can't have this or they can't have that. So you try to find a happy medium where you can give them something that's good for Thanksgiving or Christmas, whatever. Uh, like I like the fruit cakes for, for Christmas. They can be fattening, but there's a way to go around that too, you know. So I'm just saying some people have different needs and different desires for cooking stuff. And in weight loss, you just have to observe that, you know. And if you're a binge eater, I suggest you go for a walk. Just get up and just do something different. And just break that binge, break the thought. Because I know before we talked about visualization. And with weight loss, it takes a lot of that. So if you, you're binging off of chips, I suggest you try a little popcorn, a little Maybe if you're not allergic to peanuts, you could try uh, roasted peanuts, unsalted. You know, those.